Alright, hi guys. So let's start the next episode of five MCQs in five minutes, through which we are actually revising five ultra important topic. And as I have told you in my previous episode as well, that the upcoming examination in line is going to be INI CT followed by FMG and then NEET PG that we have. The question that we are going to have more will be highly, you know, influenced or I would say inspired from previous year INI CT. But rest assured, this series is going to be equally beneficial for our FMG, NEET PG, and of course this is for the INI CT aspirant as well. So the very first question that I am having today is about a patient with osteoporosis, and in a patient with osteoporosis, bisphosphonate was started on weekly basis this agent act by so rather than you know directly asking what is the mechanism of action of uh, bisphosphonate they are giving a case based scenario but again nothing changes right increasing the osteoid formation increasing the mineralization of osteoid decreasing the osteoclast mediated resorption of the bone or decreasing the parathyroid hormone secretion guys first and foremost before i discuss this one i would like to show you a very simple image here you see we already know that osteoclast activation is usually influenced by your parathyroid hormone and parathyroid hormone is mainly releasing released from the parathyroid gland so if you are going to look at the parathyroid gland this parathyroid gland is going to release a hormone called your parathyroid hormone and this parathyroid hormone they never act directly on the osteoclast they will be acting where they will be acting mainly on the osteoblast on the osteoblast whenever they work then what they are going to do they are going to increase the rank ligand rank ligand mediated activation of the osteoclast so on the osteoblast we are having rank ligand and on the osteoclast we have rank ligand receptor this receptor is for the rank ligand only so there, there is going to be rank ligand mediated activation of the osteoclast right now whenever this osteoclast will get activated then look at this this will be your activated form of osteoclast this is how a activated osteoclast look like with the ruffled brush border now what is the advantage of this ruffled brush border they will go and they will attach with the bone and they are going to cause more and more resorption of the calcium wherever they take the calcium from the bone of course all the calcium they are going to bring from the bone to the circulation and they can lead to a condition called your hypercalcemia so always remember parathyroid hormone always causes hypercalcemia how they are causing hypercalcemia this is one of the very very important mechanism that i have explained to all of you guys now our drug that we are having that is going to be bisphosphonate that happens to be the drug of choice in any case of your osteoporosis they go and they get deposited they go and they get deposited in the bone on the bone like this and once this osteoclast is going to uptake the calcium along with the calcium they will also cause uptake of this drug uptake of this drug that is bisphosphonate thinking that okay this is the food like calcium is the food of the activated osteoclast they will also think that okay this is also the food but once they take it inside they realize no this is not the food this is a poison actually for the osteoclast and what this bisphosphonate going to do this bisphosphonate it is going to promote the osteoclastic activation or i would say they inhibit the osteoclast in a simple term they promote the osteoclastic uh, you know uh, apoptosis i would say therefore there will be inhibition of the osteoclast in simple term i would say now if you are going to look at the option decrease the osteoclast mediated resorption of the bone this is the most appropriate answer for a question like this remember bisphosphonate happens to be the drug of choice for osteoporosis in any patient any age group regardless of this this will be the drug of choice i hope it is making sense all of you guys they have no role on decreasing the parathyroid hormone uh, secretion and all now since this image is here i would like to add one more very important drug here over the rank ligand we have a new monoclonal antibody because this is inict pattern mcq we have to understand that over this one we have a monoclonal antibody that can work here and this will be your denosumab the name of the agent that is going to act at the rank ligand will be your denosumab remember denosumab it is one of the monoclonal antibody that is going to act as a rank ligand inhibitor they actually going to bind with the rank ligand and they interfere with the rank ligand and rank ligand activation with the rank ligand receptor rank ligand ko rank ligand receptor se nahi milne dega therefore osteoclast will not be activated so i can say the denosumab therefore they inhibit also the osteoclast ka activation they inhibit the osteoclast activation remember denosumab it's a monoclonal antibody it's a fully human monoclonal antibody acting on the os os matlab hota hai bone os yes matlab bone so this was two important drug bisphosphonate being the drug of choice denosumab is a injectable monoclonal antibody that can also be utilized let's see the next question that we have true about the concept of essential medicine now always and always remember guys essential medicine it's a country specific list of medicine country specific list of medicine right that has been given by every country according to the disease prevalence according to the disease prevalence or i would say disease burden of that nation 
according to the disease burden of the nation the drug that you are going to choose in essential medicine usually it should be a safe drug it should be efficacious drug this is the very very important or i would say most important this is the most important criteria for you to choose essential medicine apart from that it should be cost effective whenever they talk about cost effective the cost of the entire therapy should be taken into the consideration not the cost of per tablet apart from that it should be against the most prevalent disease against the prevalent disease this is very very important it's against the prevalent disease and always and always remember they are not always going to be the life saving medicine these agents they can save life there is no doubt about it they can save because if you are not going to treat a particular condition the condition can worsen and the person can die but they are not essentially always going to be life saving medicine now you have to choose a true uh, statement about this one list of essential medicine is same throughout the world remember guys as i told you country specific right for example our country our problem can be tb malaria in united states their main problem can be stds right so this is not same throughout the world always remember it is all uh, it is for all the rare and common condition no rare drug ke liye jo drug hota hai that is orphan drug hai na not essential medicine life saving medicine it satisfies the needs of majority of population yes a country specific list according to disease burden of the nation so it should address the majority of the disease burden of the nation or satisfy the needs of the majority of the population theek hai life saving medicine they are not they can save life but they are not always they are not essentially life saving medicine okay and always remember in essential medicine there is sometimes they use a term that the uh, most preferable essential medicine will be fixed dose combination remember fixed dose combination can be there but it's not a essential criteria to choose not essential criteria to choose essential medicine and right? it can be there for example a condition like tb there is essential medicine but for not all the uh, disease condition we should be choosing fixed dose combination always and always remember so sometimes they give that in option as well next question that we are having about the shown image now remember the question like this i have already explained in uh, my previous episode somewhere around 24 or 25th episode and uh, i think you can easily see that they are asking the drug marked with x hai na to x kahan pe hai agar aap dekhoge to x sabse niche aa raha hai x is coming on the down and this will be actually your inverse agonist drug that is jo sabse pehla hai this is going to be your agonist next in the line that we are having is going to be partial agonist this is going to be your antagonist this is going to be antagonist and last one will be inverse agonist we have already explained the entire detail about this one in my previous episode somewhere around 24 25th episode you can check it out which of the following is considered as orphan drug now orphan drugs are the drugs these are the drug for rare diseases drug for rare diseases always and always remember among the given condition which one is orphan remember miltiphosin is one of the orphan drug miltiphosin is a orphan drug reason being miltiphosin is mainly utilized for kala azar or i would say leishmaniasis the condition is also given the name as a leishmaniasis for the leishmaniasis we are going to utilize they are the one that is going to promote apoptosis of these kalazar or i would say leishmaniasis methotrexate is one of them that is going to be dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor it's not orphan a drug it can be utilized in many condition like rheumatoid arthritis we can, we can also use in psoriatic arthritis we can also use them in many condition like osteosarcoma and other malignant condition 5 fluorouracil it's also one of the anti cancer drug that is one of the uh, pyrimidine analog and after the other example that we have under uh, your essential i mean sorry uh, under your orphan drug there are many other actually uh, we say fomepizole is also having you know fomepizole is uh, antidote for methanol poisoning and uh, so they are also having orphan drug status n acetyl cysteine for paracetamol toxicity it's also having orphan drug status remember that and uh, then we are also having a very important drug for inict aspirin remember dani leukin diptox and uh, dani leukin diptox they are mainly utilized for cutaneous t cell lymphoma they are also having orphan drug status in addition to that we are also having many other compound actually like for example your epoetin daropoetin epoetin that is mainly utilized for chemo induced or i would say any uh, person that is having end stage renal disease mediated anemia ha na so anemia due to any condition anemia that is occurring due to end stage renal disease or chemotherapy induced anemia in any condition epoetin so there are many other example also for our orphan drugs daniluquin diptox epoetin daropoetin they are also having orphan drug status okay drugs for rare diseases 
A 44 year old patient was given penicillin and developed rash throughout the body, difficulty in breathing. He was started immediately on adrenaline. This question has already been asked in one, it's one of the PYQ in the NEET PG and they have also been repeated in uh, one of the AIMS examination as well. So this is mainly a penicillin mediated hypersensitivity reaction that is an example of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction and we already know type 1 hypersensitivity reaction that is going to be IG mediated and the drug of choice for all of them is going to be your adrenaline. Adrenaline we are always going to use 1 is to 1000 intramuscular and we are going to utilize 0.5 ml adrenaline will be given to this patient now look at the option 1 is to 1000 IV 1 is to 1000 IM so we already have the option 1 is to 1000 IM however if it is the non responsive to this one we can repeat the same dose uh, if even if it is non responsive then in that case scenario we can further we can give them IV root but further dilution will be done 10 times diluted 1 is to 1000 IV root say we can actually give this one right so this was uh, five MCQs for all of you guys uh, in uh, the five minute or rather I would say six to seven minute but, but I hope you can understand the main concern here main uh, concern kya hai ki hume important topics ko ek bar, uh, go through karna hai these are some of my social media handle you can uh, follow me on insta where we are uh, actively uh, you know uh, posting some of the important MCQs flashcard everything that is important for your examination telegram pe aapko previous jitne web episode we have already posted you know a compiled PDF for all the episode that we have I'm pretty sure that you guys are enjoying please do not forget to like share and subscribe and do let me know what other topic you want to study in the upcoming episodes I'll see you in the upcoming class thank you very much